Welcome back to USS Cod Subbury Memorial. I'm President Paul Ferrace, and today we are in the wardroom to start with, and we're going to talk about eating food on a submarine. Not what kind of food, but how you eat it and how it compares between officers and later enlisted men. Hey, did you like that uh, really creative intro? We are just full of stuff like that, or just full of it. Anyway, um, we're in the wardroom, and it's uh, it's well known by everyone that officers and enlisted men eat the same food, uh, but the difference, uh, the similarities end there, uh, because certainly how officers ate their uh, the same food as the enlisted men was radically different. And here we are in the wardroom, and it's roughly set for a typical meal service. White linen tablecloth, the fouled anchor china, and the King Neptune pattern silver. Um, let's just say it's good to be an officer. Uh, in World War II, there was very distinct class difference between officers and enlisted men. Now, that still exists today, but not quite as, as stark as it was in World War II. Uh, your food uh, was brought from the galley to the pantry uh, where it was plated and served. And for officers that were either asleep or on duty, it was kept hot or cold uh, until they could eat. And, of course, in the, the small pantry, they would make coffee and toast. Uh, maybe do some little prep things. Uh, some stewards' mates uh, were renowned for their, uh, their dressings. Uh, but that's kind of outside the scope of what we want to talk about. The officers would eat off of what was commonly called the fouled anchor china pattern. Now, um, there were different variations, whether or not you're a flag office officer on a big battleship. Uh, if you're a chief, there's a different pattern. But for submarines, they kind of kept things simple. The standard officer's china was the fouled anchor plate. Uh, there's the little fouled anchor with the uh, thinner and uh, heavier outer blue band. Uh, these are made by Homer Laughlin, although Shenango and and Sterling and a variety of other companies made the china in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pieces. So, uh, and of course it was also on your teacup, uh, the fouled anchor uh, teacup and, and saucer. Uh, this is a Shenango and a Shenango saucer. Uh, by the way, uh, etiquette was that the fouled anchor should point toward the center of the table. Unknown thing. Anyway, um, so you had uh, a variety of, of, of plates. This, I believe, uh, would be uh, for fruit uh, pieces, perhaps a roll. This... Uh, you know, there's a distinct, and if you're a, if you're a steward's mate or today we call a mess, uh, mess uh, management guy, uh, please chime in on the comments um, because you know I grew up in a in a typical blue collar family where we were lucky to have Melmac. I mean, mom just would throw the food on the table, and my brother and I would just jump at it like wild animals. But anyway, uh, so suffice to say, you have a dinner plate, you have a soup bowl for your consomme or your uh, bisque, uh, you had a full arrangement of china. Now, for this, uh, the, the flatware, silver service was the way, uh, and they uh, all had a distinctive uh, pattern. It was based on a standard hotel pattern. It was called the uh, King Neptune pattern. So you've got your scallop shell. Can you come in, zoom in? I know you can zoom in. Here you see the scallop. Um, shell uh, and the, the different uh, uh, decorative things. Now, uh, this is a standard hotel pattern. You go to hotels today, you're going to see very frequently um, the King Neptune pattern. Now, what the Navy does differently is they add the fouled anchor uh, engraving right there on that, that, that smooth spot. And on the reverse side, they engrave USN. So that's how you can tell World War II, and it's still in use today, uh, big version. So we've got, uh, again, uh, we'll do an insert here uh, of the uh, silver cabinet. Right behind Evan is a full uh, silver buffet 
for the wardroom under lock and key because we don't want those yard birds to walk away with anything uh, while we're in, in shipyard for overhaul. And God forbid, since we are the Martha Stewart submarine with all of the correct silver and china and linens, we don't want uh, visitors to walk away with anything. Uh, so thank God the, the drawers all have locks. But anyway, uh, you had a full set of uh, silverware. I mean, ranging from the uh, little olive fork, uh, salad fork, uh, standard meat fork, uh, bread knife, soup spoon, uh, teaspoon. I mean, we've got everything. I mean, you would think that uh, um, uh, we're aboard the, uh, the HMS Victory with Lord Nelson. Uh, but uh, again, uh, officers were um, a breed above. Uh, and uh, they were treated uh, like gentlemen because by act of Congress, they are gentlemen. Uh, so they have a full set of silver as well. And this is not a complete set. Uh, by the way, I do want to point out even, even the cake servers, uh, U.S. Navy. Um, where was this last week when we did our 019 uh, ceremonial cake cutting? Couldn't find that one when I needed it. Um, but... Uh, um, you have uh, uh, all of this uh, laid out for you by the steward's mates. Um, and, of course, it wasn't always very formal, uh, but you had, you had what you needed. Uh, and, of course, you have to have a lap napkin. And uh, these are napkin rings, and these are standard shipboard napkin rings. Uh, we have several here from other ships. This one is special, and pardon me, we have manners. Although I could stuff it up here, but no, we'll, we'll leave this across one's lap, as one should. Now this, uh, and be prepared for another zoom in, Evan, this is uh, the napkin ring for the captain of the cod. It is marked number one on one side and engraved USS Cod on the other. Uh, this came to us uh, from a crewman uh, who, uh, who gave it to us. Uh, he helped himself. Uh, but thankfully he did, because otherwise it would have been lost to history. Speaking of helping themselves to uh, uh, artifacts, this is a creamer from USS Cod in World War II. And again, this was uh, part of the Cod's wardroom, uh, but it went home in the sea bag of a sailor, uh, and he returned that. And again, this is uh, Reed and Barton, uh, silver plate. Uh, it's not sterling silver, solid silver, but uh, it's, uh, it's a layer of silver over, uh, I believe, brass. There's vertigris in here. But anyway, um, we try not to polish this too much. Now, this has a little bit of hand oil, although my hands are notoriously dry. Uh, but this uh, will be properly conserved and cleaned before put back into storage. Uh, suffice to say, this... Uh, and this are the only elements of uh, original cod uh, china. Everything else uh, is, uh, well, an analog. Uh, they kept everything the same. So the, the, the sugar bowls, the creamers, there's several varieties of creamers. Um, they're all the same. And we have a great insert of a picture here to show you uh, cod's wardroom in World War II where you can see these uh, elements there. Uh, but uh, so... There's your silver, again, the original. By the way, having mentioned original, this coffee carafe is original to cod. Now, the existence of a vacuum coffee carafe um, kind of puts to rest what I always believed was an urban legend. And, of course, the story goes... Um, the officers are up on the bridge uh, on a war patrol, and uh, everybody wants a fresh coffee, and the steward's mate comes up uh, and hands everybody uh, cups of coffee, and they're full to the brim. And nobody can understand how this steward's mate got four cups of coffee from here up the ladder to the conning tower, from the conning tower ladder up to the bridge without spilling a drop. And the punchline was... Well, Captain, I takes a drink out of each cup, and when I get back up here, I spit it back in there so they's full. Uh, that likely didn't happen because the steward's mate would simply bring up a carafe full of hot coffee with uh, the cups. So, great story. 
but this kind of says no urban legend. Um, speaking of coffee, um, we were able to solve, or actually my father was able to solve a mystery. Uh, this is a demitasse cup. Now, if you know your, your uh, um, demitasse, that's French, demi for half, half cup. This is a half cup of a standard teacup. This is used for very powerful coffee. Um, uh, not cappuccino, espresso. Espresso, and of course you would put sugar, so you need a little demitasse spoon. Now why in the heck is this part of the U.S. Navy wardroom service? This isn't the Italian Navy. Uh, I mean, this is USS Cod, not the Bacala. Uh, well, nobody knew, and in fact, uh, although I have a full set of Demitas, uh, thanks to eBay and thrift stores, uh, the USS Pampanito found a set of Demitas in their wardroom, and then Pampanito manager Russ Booth was perplexed as to why the hell they would have Demitas on a U.S. Navy submarine, and nobody really understood. Uh, until one day, well, decades ago when my dad was alive, I mentioned that to him. I said, you know, nobody, we can't figure out why they would have had something for Italians or Turkish people on a submarine. And my dad said, it's simple. Uh, before Dramamine, uh, one of the uh, cures for seasickness was to drink extremely powerful um, espresso. Uh, that would settle your stomach. So... For uh, the wardroom, uh, you don't want the junior officers barfing their brains out if you're in a heavy seaway. So serving them espresso from Demitas was one uh, remedy for that. Um, I'm looking around. Of course, uh, you have your, your sterling silver fruit bowl uh, filled with fresh fruit for the first part of a patrol. Now, our fruit will always be fresh because it's polystyrene, but the really good stuff... Uh, so good, in fact, uh, we often have to replace the apples because of frequent adult and children bite marks. Uh, but uh, after your meal, uh, and we know submariners ate very well, uh, why not have a cigarette? Now, what this is, is a cigarette box. It is not original to Cod. Uh, I only wish I knew what happened to Cod's um, wardroom silver box. Now, I did get to hold the... the, the uh, the wardroom cigarette box from USS Barb. Uh, Admiral Flucky, uh, that was part of his, uh, uh, his collection of memorabilia from his, his boat. Uh, the originals were, again, sterling silver uh, and a little bit longer, maybe three inches longer, uh, very shiny, elegant sterling silver. And across the, the hinge top, now this is lifts up, but uh, the hinge top uh, would have been engraved USS Cod. Uh, and this would have been uh, a gift, uh, I am told, from the, uh, from the shipyard to the uh, wardroom. Now, this I found in a thrift store. It's roughly analogous to what we had. And, of course, inside we have real cigarettes uh, and wood blocks wrapped with uh, period cigarette uh, uh, manufacturer's labels. Because everyone knows, to aid digestion, one should have a cigarette. And, of course, cigarettes are healthy. Four out of five doctors recommended Chesterfields. Um, so that's how uh, the officers uh, served by a steward mate uh, would enjoy their meals out at sea on a submarine. Now let's go aft and see how the enlisted men would eat the same chow. Well, here we are back in the crew's mess. Uh, we keep one of our four tables set for a meal uh, with uh, typical World War II uh, China service for enlisted men. Now, um, if you're a sailor on a surface ship, if you're enlisted man on a surface ship, this is what you're eating off of. Standard uh, stainless steel cafeteria tray. Now these were used by the Army, the Army Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Navy, the Marines, um, and prisons. Uh, yeah, you got your handless coffee cup and you got a soup bowl, but you're eating off of a stainless steel 
uh, tray. Now, we only keep one on board the cod for demonstration purposes only. Um, we don't want to encourage the wrath of any departed World War II submariners. They were very insistent that we not have this on board, but it's a registered artifact, so uh, I was able to calm their nerves to say it's only here for uh, demonstration purposes. Now, luckily for us, uh, the Navy did not reinvent the wheel when it came to acquiring China for the millions of uh, sailors in World War II. They used standard diner china. So this is uh, stuff that you could buy anywhere from uh, Homer Laughlin, Walker China, uh, Sterling China, um, Buffalo China. Um, yeah, this is uh, Sterling China. Your standard... Uh, white dinner dish. You got a soup bowl. Uh, there were soup spoons, but suffice to say your teaspoons often were used uh, based on photos. And of course the famous World War II handleless coffee mug. Um, let me tell you, that bad boy, uh, you don't want to get hit with one of these things like the, uh, the crew of a German U-boat when they came in uh, close aboard a destroyer escort. Um, to escape the destroyer escorts uh, uh, machine gun fire. Um, the guys on the uh, Navy ship thought they were attempting to ram them. So when they couldn't depress their guns any uh, further, uh, the bridge watch was winging uh, these one pound uh, ceramic uh, coffee mugs. And one of them just about uh, killed the XO of a German U-boat. Uh, these were all pretty much made by Sterling China down in East Liverpool. Ohio. No handle because, number one, a handle is a weak point. It's added before you fire it, you glaze it and fire it, and uh, they they only do one thing. They come off. Um, so you had your handless coffee mug. This very dense clay actually has some unique properties. Uh, today we have our, our modern igloos and whatever those things are that people are paying ungodly uh, amounts of money to get uh, to keep their uh, beverages hot and cold. This hot, uh, this clay, you pour hot coffee into here, perhaps too hot to drink, it's going to absorb the heat and bring it down to a drinkable temperature immediately. And better yet, it's going to hold it. It's going to insulate that coffee uh, for quite a long time. In fact, I think these things rival even the fanciest uh, uh, thermo, uh, thermo uh, stabilized coffee things that they want you to buy for 50 bucks. Uh, but yeah, so enlisted men are eating uh, the same food as the officers, but they're eating it off of plain white diner china, and their silverware is stainless steel, uh, real simple bread, general utility knife, a teaspoon, and a fork, and uh, there are in, they're stamped USN. We'll get a close-up on that in a minute, but USN. Uh, you know, um, that's, uh, that's all they got. And that was sufficient. Um, they were uh, fed family style back here. Uh, they didn't have steward's mates. No, they had mess cranks, non-quals. Today we call them nubs, non-useful bodies. That would be serving uh, from the uh, serving platters, um, you know, whatever the, the fare was for the meal. Remember, breakfast, dinner, and then supper. Um, in World War II, there were no mid-rats. Uh, basically, the leftovers of the day were available uh, if you uh, wanted to have a snack uh, on the mid-watch, midnight to 4 a.m. Just stay out of the way of uh, George Sacco. He's baking, uh, but he was a good guy. Uh, he could uh, let you get in there and, and grab some, uh, some leftovers uh, before they started to uh, uh, make uh, breakfast in the morning hours. So, uh, yeah, 24 men at a time in this space. The very fact that the fleet submarine has uh, an enlisted men's mess deck is a testament to the, uh, to the luxury status that was afforded to uh, our submariners uh, and the fact that we're adjacent to a berthing space. Dedicated sleeping and eating rooms are not found on other uh, uh, submarines of other nations. Uh, the American fleet sub is renowned as a cruise liner. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, now, uh, even though I just started a diet, I'm hungry just thinking about food. Evan, let's go get something to eat. Let's wrap this up. Remember to hit the like, 
subscribe button, the notification button, and please uh, tell your friends and uh, and neighbors about our channel. Uh, we're we're slowly closing in on on Libby and Ryan, and uh, when we do surpass them, um, you know we may uh, we may make them walk behind our chariots in the victory parade before we send them to the lions in the Coliseum. Join us soon for more content. Thanks.